church. I'll be seated today. Thank you. Um, it has always been my prayer to find a solution that can help those that are non-believers and believers. I've been hiding this secret after I found it two years ago. The reason why I was hiding it is because I wanted it to be chemically proven, scientifically proven. These are not the first team to find out what is in our plant. The name of the plant is called Aguma. That is the plant there on the picture there. There. You see behind the men there? Right. Behind him just there. It is a plant. Yeah, that one. It is a plant that carries a lot of properties and it's our anchor help. My main concern were two diseases. That is HIV and cancer. So we kept them there. Remember, they're not the only one. They tested and they found out some powerful phytochemicals within the hair, which can fight HIV, which can fight cancer. <laughs> Prophetically, I've discovered the plant. Remember, a prophet dwells and grows high where you concentrate on. I've been praying for it and I've been concentrating on it. It has been so hard, but I want to assure you, the world may deny it, but they will eventually agree. Because there's one thing about life, you can never fight with facts and win. Facts are facts. If there are phytochemicals in our plant, there are phytochemicals. Cancer thrive is on oxidation and nutrients in our body. Our own cells become our enemy and starts to fight us. The phytochemicals that were found in our plant they starve cancer cells with that oxygen and those nutrients until the cancer cell dies. Our T cells are the ones that are fought by the HIV virus, making our immune less effective, allowing any other infection to destroy us, making it a full-blown full HIV AIDS. The chemicals that you found in our guma are enough to make our immune strong so that it can fight any foreign invader. I will explain to you why it is a gift that I have launched towards my birthday. day. I will explain to you why and I will explain to you how it is consumed and I will explain to you all other things that may be there which I know will surprise you. So I want to give you an opportunity, the journalist here, President of ASEAN Admire, whoever would want to ask a question such that I will answer them. Okay? Your name and where you're from? And then... Yeah, thank you so much. My name is Angela Chimba. Uh -huh. I am from Zambia Daily Mail. You are from what? Zambia Daily Mail. Okay, Zambia Daily Mail. Okay, yes. yes. Um, I just want to find out, because this is a very big announcement that you've made. <laughs> 
has it been uh, tested on someone who has HIV? Because people want proof. It's very difficult, like you have said. Okay. Uh, Let me answer you. Yes. I have tested it fully on human beings. And a lot of these human beings have gone negative. Hear me. If you take our Aguma plant with respect to it and its order, in 14 days, I want you to listen. Hey, Terera. Terera. Sanda Pete. In 14 days, for example, let's say your CD4 count has gone down to 115. In 14 days, that's when we do our first test of the viral load in the CD4 count. In 14 days, your CD4 count must raise with above 200%. As you continue to take the Agoma plant, you start to see your CD4 count raising until the HIV becomes undetectable, until you've become negative fully. It has been tested with human beings. Any question further, so that I can answer as you ask. I can speak more than that, but I just want to allow you to ask. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, My name is Nomo Sapongula. I'm from Pinkulu Communications. You're from? God, I'm from Pinkulu Communications. From which country? In South Africa. South Africa, okay, yes. Yes. I would like to ask, in terms of the ingredients, um, how, how much percent is organic and how much percent is chemical? While we are on that, man of God, I would also like to find out, in terms of the buy-in from other countries, you mentioned that there might be a rejection, but eventually they will submit and agree because you can never disagree with facts. How do you plan to make sure that you convince them to accept this uh, as soon as possible? As we know that is, this epidemic disease really needs an intervention as soon as possible. Thank you. Here it is. I've broken it into two. At this stage, we are on 100% organic. Why am I on 100% organic? It's because we found that there is no any side effect. But it is also my wish and my desire. That's why they say you're going to work on it until you've reached all formulations that you can get. But right now, it's 100% organic. It's a plant. There are plants that we're mixing from here, Zimbabwe, and another one from another part of Mozambique there. Then we mix them and 100% organic. That's what I want. Okay, for the other countries to believe, there's one thing that is powerful called testimonials. We are bringing in we have done it on our own. But with the government of Zimbabwe, they are summoning what you call our own local research board. The minister has already indicated this. Where they bring in, they bring in people that are HIV positive together. Then the research board will then start to take statistics of people that are being healed and give to the world as proof that is on the government side. But on my own, I vote my own testimonials. But you, you know what? People will listen to the voice of the minister of a country than a mere prophet. Okay? Um, good afternoon, men of God. Uh -huh. My name is Bonisile Makubu. I'm uh -huh. from Swaziland. You're from Swaziland? Yes, the okay. town of Swaziland. Yeah. Um, I'd like to know, as a long-term plan, um, how well are you working with government to try and make sure that the plant doesn't get depleted in the long run? Uh, the plant is planned. Explained to enough to help my my own people. It's plenty enough to empower my country. 
Um, and I, I tell you, it's a plant that we have protected. Just for you to know, we are the first people to discover that plant. So we have intellectual rights over the plant. When you went to India, they advised us and says, in the botanic records, because every plant is under botanic records, this plant is not in any botanic records. So we are the first, and I, we pertained it. If you use it, I will sue you. You can only use it through us. <laughs> Thank you. Questions are coming, yes, yes. Hi, my name is Linda uh -huh. from Ghana. From Ghana, yes. welcome Linda. When you, thank you. When you mentioned, you made the announcement, you yes. said you made the medicine from a plant. Uh -huh. Yes, I would like to know which plants, from which plant you made the medicine. And I would also want to know, how many people have you tested the medicine on? What were their reactions? And I want to know, apart from um, the researchers here, have you had the opportunity to test the effic efficacy of the medicine with other laboratories? Thank you. Okay. If I say it medicine, let me maybe give you a, a proper term. Since it's still 100% organic, I don't carry rights to name it a medicine, because I'm 100% organic. But not afraid to tell you that it's a cure. Am I being clear? Okay. I've tested it in many people. And I'm not at liberty of telling you the plant. I can show you a picture. That, that is how it is. But to protect also what God has revealed, revealed to me, I will not tell you the plant. Bring back, send back the microphone. Uh -huh. um. Uh, this the, uh, cure that you have developed is meant to be for the whole world. If if I get you right, yes, okay. So people would want to take the cure. I believe that it is the right of a patient to know the source or the ingredient in a particular cure. And I really no, allow it. Hey. I believe. Allow it. I Hello. believe that a patient has the right uh, to know, yes. And so, once it is to be prevent, presented hey, in the world... Hey. I'm not telling you. Please respect my visitors. They are allowed to ask any question. They are not allowed to block them. And then I'm going to answer them. Okay? All right. Uh, once, once it is to be presented to the world, I think it is, it is um, fair for you to let us know the source and which plant it is. And then you still did not answer my question on the number of people you have tested on. You mentioned that you have tested on people, uh, but I want to know the number of persons you have tested on. And then how long has this been? Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Please, allow them to ask. Thank you very much. If you look very carefully, what we are all consuming, in Africa, it's not really detailed where is it from. If I ask you what makes caffeinose, you may not really tell me what it is. They will write, uh, listen, they will write a chemical formulation, but they will not tell you the plant. Where, listen, let me answer you. Where they extract it from. It is those common herbs that may be mentioned but the deeper the herb the deeper you would want to protect it for example if i ask you a simple question today at the hotel i was told you were drinking coca-cola can you tell me the plant that makes coca-cola I strongly believe 
that Coca Cola has kept this plant for the sake of it to become an intellectual property. What you are trying to run away from, my sister, is we are Africans. The moment I let down this tree, we are going to be swiped off from our own discovery. And they will produce from the same tree from these developed countries. And as Africa, we will continue to buy from foreigners. Allow it, allow it, yes. HIV yeah. has been with us for long. Yes. It is not affected by persons in Africa only. Yeah. Yes. People across the world. But and what know, we are listen, talking about is listen, a very sensitive issue. Listen, listen, listen. HIV is a world problem, but a more African challenge. Exactly. Exactly. Let me tell you the truth. These guys that I sit with, and the wives that are not here, they were not very keen in finding the cure. That I can stand for my words. They were very keen in finding the vaccine, okay. not the cure. Okay. One person died, is it in Switzerland or Singapore, and there was an inquest of HIV. Why did she die with HIV? What happened? This is our own African problem which was waiting for an African solution. Go on records. There are seven to eight million people on record with a problem, problem as HIV in South Africa. Exactly. Then there's Zimbabwe, there's Botswana, there's Swaziland. You will hear of the European countries on number 27, 28. If it was their challenge by now, they would have found the cure. The way they found the cure of malaria. Malaria killed more people than HIV. And they found the cure and the, 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 the way of vaccinating. So we are dealing with an African challenge. And the other challenge is not only finding the cure. The other challenge is finding our local cure. Why? Look at Zimbabwe. We have a challenge of forex. There is no medicine in our shelves right now. Who will bring the medicine if we don't bring our own medicine? If we allow them to always have the formulations and make them... Okay, just to surprise you, I was offered 56 million US dollars by an American company for me to point them the tree. Yes, go ahead. Yes, good afternoon. Yes. My name is Mohammed from Kenya. Can you speak louder? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Mohammed from Kenya. Yes, sir. Thank you. And uh, my question is, first of all, it's the issue of, of affordability. Affordability. Yeah, we understand that uh, HIV and AIDS, uh, the medication is not cheap. And most African countries, Kenya included, uh, uh, rely mostly on foreign aid for the medication to yes. be provided in Africa. Yes. How is this medication going to be affordable? The second question is, uh, we know the challenges of sensitizing the youth. Uh, for example, in African countries, the youth are not afraid of the HIV virus. They are afraid of pregnancy. So they will not be afraid of getting the HIV because there is ARV. As you, you're launching this medication, how are you going to sensitize the youth who, uh, for example, are will not... Yeah. Yes. First of all, what is expensive, we have agreed it's more expensive. It is not a cure. It's a treatment. 
um, the chronic treatment, which people are taking ARVs average, maybe fifty dollars, sixty dollars, eighty dollars, um, maybe some rise to hundred dollars, some to six hundred dollars. Whilst people are not being cured, they are being treated. What I'm launching here is something that will kill the virus. I think it carries a lot of value. But the reason why I've kept it in its herbal form, powder, capsules, compressed pills, like the way I've done it, is to make it affordable. My next plan, I actually told my minister in Zimbabwe, we have put a place in called Urungwe, where there's a record of 29,000 people, 29,000, what, what's the number, Sachiti, what's the actual number? 29,000 people who are positive. There's a story that was written. I was actually speaking to the minister saying, after you've done all your tests, give me an opportunity to go and donate to those 29,000 people of 450,000. I think it can be my greatest achievement to help people as much as I can. I've been helping people in different ways. So we're going to make it as much as affordable as it can be and help whoever needs to be helped. I'm not just a Zimbabwean in a way. Uh, my wife is from Swaziland. Swaziland to be helped. South Africa is the capital city of Africa. We are all running to South Africa. I would want South Africa to be helped. I would be very keen if the minister is interested to understand what I'm saying. We all land in Kenya. We are going to Nigeria. We pass through Kenya every time. I've been stuck in Kenya before. So it is my desire to help whoever needs, needs the help. Right now we are speaking of HIV, HIV, but do you know that there is more demand of cancer than HIV in the European countries? But if you listen to my, 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 my sense of, of communication, I'm speaking of HIV more, because it's our first local problem. Yesterday, I saw ladies who were crying over cancer, breast cancer. I tell you, those are small things. Those are small, 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 small things. And I say that boldly, those are small things. Over the issue of awareness, we are already a ministry. I'm already a preacher. I try by all means to preach over that. And it's so boring, there's an issue of reinfection. You wouldn't want to cure someone then they are reinfected, you cure someone then they are reinfected, even the soldiers of your body would deny. So we are going to preach as much as we can. You are preaching right now. It's something that is coming from the church. I am not clothed in my spiritual sight. This is also spiritual in a way to me. So it's very important. So we'll do whatever we can to invest in awareness. But I think my first desire was to kill the problem first. Thank you. Yes. Man of God, this is Chablani Zonda. I'm coming from Wazulu Natal and I'm working for One Kaiser TV. Okay, thank you. My question is, now that you have made a profound announcement about a very good discovery and uh, that goes to your sermon uh, this afternoon that says we reclaim we discover what we've lost yes now i'm only interested in the rollout distribution of it because once this uh, announcement go on air across south africa people will be interested in knowing as to where to get the medicine since I'm going to supply it as 100% organic, all my children that are here are the ones that will be supplying it. Hear me? How? I bought a department called Women of Valor. I've got my partners. I've got a group of people called the Billion Dollar Class. Next Saturday, I will announce it after this, I'm going to invite them for training. We train them. We dress them. We make them understand how it works. We, we, we show them the results. Because I've got the results. 
of the phytochemical ones, we, we show them everything. Then we give them bags. And then we give them a subsidized bread. Then you put in, in international bread, where one does not change. But them, since they are children, we give them at a less rate. They then go into the public and say, I have this, which is called Aretha. As they distribute, they are also having their own income. This is also a program to empower my own people. Listen to me. That's why I'm not rushing to make it chemicalized. Because if I chemicalize it, it's only going to be found in pharmacies. I don't have many children with pharmacies. But I've got many children with energy to sell. So it is my aim to empower them, to give them a product. But I want you to listen to me. This app that you see, is a function called the service function. If you go on that service tab, if you click there, my back office will respond to you and start to answer you what you want. What are the symptoms? Can you have picture evidence? Then the doctors behind the app will ask you, where are you? If you, you tell them where, they, where you are, they will link with one of my women of valor who is close to you. Then they will tell you, let it be delivered to your doorstep. And you can purchase it through the app. Because now I'm doing it for those that are shy. Okay. So, so there is a link between the discovery and the app. The app is the door of people purchasing or understanding whatever is happening. I have bought many machines of CD4 counting. I've bought many machines of viral load counting. I'm going to train my people here because I've got a clinical license. In other words, I've got a license of running a clinic. I've already started to build the biggest laboratory, if not in Africa. The reason why I'm building the laboratory here is to synergize with my team here. For them to empower us on how to keep on researching. So that we keep on developing this product until it has helped the whole world. Who are the workers of the laboratory? These children that are here seated. So, hear me. We are picking it all here in Zimbabwe. The capsules, the, the powder, everything we are, we are picking, the film coated pills, everything. We are picking it here in Zimbabwe. And we are distributing it from Zimbabwe. And after I have trained my children on Saturday, I will then start to distribute. Not because I don't have the product. I have it with me here. But I want to empower. I have people that have been loyal with me, who have stood with me for long. So I want to empower. And as I'm saying, the first results are found in 14 days. And the first results that we're going to... And uh, while I was there, that's why I'm, I heard about the declaration by Prophet Magaya as having had a cure for HIV and AIDS. So it has taken me some time since I came back. I wanted to know exactly what was happening. <clears throat> and um, we called a meeting with, professor, uh, with the prophet, Prophet Magaya, and the Medicines Control Authority of Zimbabwe, our regulatory body, the Secretary for Health, and our research unit, the National Institute of Health Research. We had a very good meeting and we were very open to each other with uh, Prophet Magaya. 
And at the end of the day, like he has said, he's apologized for having gone a bit too fast and not realizing his popularity and the impact of his message to the general population of Zimbabwe. Normally, you will have other prophets who are of a small caliber. They will talk to a small congregation, and there would not be any distortions coming out of whatever they say. But in this particular exercise, because of his popularity and the coverage that he got, you know, from the media, his message came out and it kind of set some distortions in the system that we have in the regulation of medicines in Zimbabwe. However, he now appreciates that uh, there are regulations to be followed which is very good. And because of that, we want to continue emphasizing to the population that whatever antiretrovirals that you are on, please carry on taking them. Prophet Magaya's medications are not yet approved. Yes, he's got the claim on the basis of the research which was carried out in India, but that was in India and not in Zimbabwe. For the purposes of registration of a drug in Zimbabwe, there are the regulations which have to be followed. I also want everybody to know that he holds a license, you know, but that is, and that is the license which he was basing on. That license will give him the opportunity, he's always held that license. That license gives him the opportunity to be able to register his medication, his herbal, his herbal uh, complementary medicine, either as an allopathic, which will require clinical trials or alternatively, as, just as a complement. appreciate the new discoveries. We prefer those discoveries to go through scientifically proven processes. And those scientifically proven, proven processes are what we are following now. He has sent the message of apology and he has guaranteed us that there will be not even one single individual in Zimbabwe and from outside, because he's had a lot of communication from outside Zimbabwe. People asking if they could access the product. He has assured us that he's not going to dispense any of his medication until the medication has gone through the thorough testing process. And that thorough testing process will start with him giving us the documentation from India. We need to see what the Indians had done. And from that, we'll forward the, we will forward the, um, the process through our Medicines Control Authority of Zimbabwe. We will involve independent physicians 
independent nephrologists, independent doctors and scientists, you know, who will be able to carry out this evaluation process. And at the end of the day, it becomes relevant for us to be able to say Prophet Magaya authorization process. We want to make sure, you know, don't forget our main point is to make sure that the population is protected. You know, so we will not leave any stone unturned in as far as the complementary herbal medicines are concerned. Right? We are working on a plan to ensure that they go through a rigorous testing process to ensure that our population is protected. If we are having to do the same for our local products, surely for those products which are similar coming from outside Zimbabwe, we should equally subject them to a rigorous testing process and come up with a scientific outcome which cannot be challenged. You know, there are guidelines which we will have to follow. So it only means whoever has got products, we shall be considering shortly on how we're going to take action, you know, and make sure that our population is well protected. Uh, first of all, I've been holding what I hear for many years, mm -hmm. and there's no one who can stand there and claim that I've given them, meaning I was able to hold it. After I announced, including the journalists that were there, they requested that I can actually give them samples that I didn't give anyone. And I have not sold any bottle even after the announcement, because my announcement was very clear. I said I shall wait for my government to give a final statement. It is then the video, it is then every letter that I have written to every authority. Uh, on terms of publicity, um, if it was publicity, I would have chickened out by now and said don't test what I have. But I'm still here, and I'm very glad that the government has given me an opportunity to test what I can. It's not a public stand. If it was, there was a way out. Yesterday, there was a way out. My office was raided. Uh, today, I just said, I'm not coming there. I've been offered a lot by outside countries to come and do it in their countries. But I'm still here, and I'm saying, I want to go through the clinical test. And I'm very glad because the government gave me an opportunity. They said, uh, we can, you can finance it if it's having a problem. So I said, I can finance the clinical trial until it's, it's done. So I carry a product that I know if it's tested by any fire, it will give me good results. In, a, in actual fact, let me just add on, you know, that's one, of, one other angle which is uh, very, uh, very interesting. Prophet Magaya is going to finance the whole clinical trial. You know, so it makes a lot of sense for us as well. And that is the most likely formula for any future products, especially the external ones. You know, they will have to finance the clinical trials. And I realize that that is what happens in other countries. If you want, even, even for, for MCAS right now, you know, if uh, an Indian company or whatever company wants to to sell a drug or register a drug here, a medicine here in Zimbabwe, they have to pay for the clinical trials, uh, I mean for the trials, which have to be carried out by Medicines Control Authority of Zimbabwe. You know, so that we are happy with, that is going to meet the costs. We will identify the personnel, set up the team and move forward. Yes. Um, first of all, the, the plant is from Zimbabwe. I wanted to protect the plant because when you do such things in a place where the plant is, it means that it can go into everyone's ears very quickly. Second of all, I was also looking for uh, accredited uh, laboratories. Where I went, it is respected in many countries and uh, they have got enough equipment to test. Because I knew that this is a bigger, bigger announcement. I didn't want to miss my words or miss my announcement. So they were supposed to go through all five types of clinical tests, and they went through that. So um, and, and as well, looking at India, and on its level of, of uh, uh, medical levels, they are higher, and they are with high equipment. So that was the, that was the, uh, the reason why I went up. 
Yes, because the results from here are going to be complementing the results from India. Remember, the one minister said you want to receive the report from India first. That's the first stage. Then the second stage is taking people that are HIV positive, uh, we are willing, we are going to sign and say we are willing, uh, we are willing to go through the test. And then you administrate after testing the, the drug if it's safe for human consumption. That's the first uh, trial, the, the first protocol trial, whereby they test safety. If they have proven the safety of the drug, we then place them in. Uh, with, uh, uh, then give them to people to administrate. Uh, facts are facts. If people are healed, they are healed. If they are not healed, the ministry will announce. Uh, however, uh, I can see profit is drifting. You know, uh, uh, we wouldn't want you to start making a statement of that nature because we've just come out of it. Uh, this is now for us to be able to say we are going to conduct a clinical trial in the format of the clinical trial is going to be set by us as the ministry. So, so don't put him under pressure to My say My impression is that it is the right the decision we should do of supposedly rushing to announce the results. Um you see after after talking to the authorities everything will start to show a bit of more light that everything was rushed and um, the reason of the rush was to was because of what I was holding the excitement which overwhelmed me and um, I, I spoke before I looked into authorities uh, regulations for me to come and apologize it is a sign of regretting uh, of the announcement uh, that uh, I rushed before looking at the authorities that uh, uh, regulates the, 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 the laws of, of Zimbabwe here we've got uh, almost all uh, journalists of all newspapers